All right, I'm thrilled to be joined here with Judith Simon, the president and interim CEO of Vera. So for those of you who don't know, Vera is the voluntary carbon market's most dominant standards body, issuing about two thirds of all carbon credits in the global voluntary carbon market. Um, and as we will get into shortly, this is a very pivotal moment for Vera as an institution. Um, it's dealing with a couple of challenges uh, and significant market-wide and internal transformations. And luckily for Vera, they appear to have brought on board just the person <laughs> with the expertise to lead the organization through these incredibly exciting times. And that is our guest, Judith Simon. Um, so Judith's extensive background as a corporate, corporate executive includes pivotal operational roles at Zillow Group, Redfin, CarMax, and Circuit City. And what I think is most noteworthy about your resume, Judith, is the clear through line of operational expertise applied to different sectors and industries, all of which were experiencing transformation at the time, which is very relevant for this moment at Vera. Um, and what I think is particularly noteworthy is that you've held serious leadership positions at three multi-billion dollar companies, um, while our entire market is worth $2 billion. <laughs> and so leading the transformation of Vera and maybe of the whole market should be uh, just another day at the office for you. I'll do my best. Yeah, great. Um, okay, so we're gonna start. Uh, you joined Vera, which is a nonprofit, in February of this year after ex an extensive career in the yep. private sector. Yep. Um, maybe share a bit about what drew you to that opportunity and how it's been over the last year. Yeah, wonderful. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. And thank you, Dana, for having me at this event. I I'm so incredibly excited about being at Vera. Um, I think there were a few reasons that drew me there. One is the mission, you know, just an opportunity to really have high level impact on this critical climate crisis. Um, and then it was just this right blend of what the needs were and what my skills were. And so, which we think about like Vera going from a startup organization, you know, 20 people, and then a couple years later it's 150. And then we look at what the transformation and scale is going to be required by 20. 30 and 2050, uh, we needed to build that internal capability to be ready for that scale, and that is experience that I have, and so it just felt like a really great compliment. Um, and so I felt like I could contribute, and I'm really, really thrilled to be there. I think the other piece is, you know, I've been in the private sector, and you know, the stakeholder at the end of that process is a customer that you're trying to serve, and this is like our stakeholder is just all of humanity, and um, yeah, it's really rewarding to think about doing that. Yep. That's extremely interesting, by the way, because <laughs> you talked about the stakeholder of Vera being all of humanity, but a very important stakeholder group of Vera are corporates, yes. who are the buyers, yes. the natural yes. buyers in the market. Yes. So I think you coming with the corporate perspective is probably very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, what has been most surprising to you over the last year? So it's been six months. Just six months, <laughs> yes. February to September is six months. It feels like a year. She's good no, at math, just... everyone. <laughs> um, the most surprising. So I think it is the complexity of the whole ecosystem. So it's not like there's like one customer that we're serving. When I remember our first conversations about, well, what do our stakeholders think? And then they're like, which stakeholders? Because we have lots of stakeholders. We have people on the supply side and the demand side, and we got people in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we've got project proponents, we've got other standard setters, we've got you know, buyers, corporates, intermediaries. And I'm like, what's an intermediary? But anyway, so I think, so th I think that was really surprising. And so then it's gotta be, we've got to be really intentional about the role that we play and how we, and how we can serve that in a really balanced way. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing I heard was no one will ever be happy with you. So, you know, we're just not an organization that's serving one set of needs. You're balancing needs and pressures. And so that's new. Yeah, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the new era for Vera. So I, like many people, opened my inbox two days ago, I think, and got a lovely email with great branding. Great, that thank you. Talked thank about, you, a, yeah, team. <laughs> well, you get credit, you're okay. the CEO. Um, <laughs> it talked about a new era at Vera. Um, now, there are a lot of demands on Vera, obviously. Uh, we've been watching Vera grapple with things like long registration and issuance times, uh, some public questioning of the integrity around certain kinds of methodologies, uh, and the need to incorporate in new technology uh, at the methodology level. Um, because technology is advancing super quickly throughout the VCM. 
And so I think the new era at Vera and the three commitments that you made, which were to operational excellence, integrity and impact, and accountability, are exactly what's needed thematically to address a bunch of the challenges that we've seen. But I would love for you to share more insights about those three commitments that Vera has made. Great. So as we thought about this transformation, so Vera has been you know, kind of revolutionizing um, this market and adding value through setting standards and solving problems and uh, developing methodologies and really like finding solutions to really difficult problems for 15 years now. And so that, that is a great basis for us to move forward from. Uh, but we also see what's coming down the pike. So it's an ever-evolving sector. There are new entrants. Technology is evolving. The sciences are evolving. And the demand is changing. Uh, and then we have this critical growth curve. So anyway, so we stepped back and said, before we formalize this roadmap, uh, what do we actually need to consider? And so I went on this listening tour, and I've talked to 35 organizations over the last six weeks from other standard setters, NGOs, uh, buyers, intermediaries, um, I'm missing people, but everyone in the sector th that is uh, in the tier one, I talked to 35 organizations, and we also sent out a survey for the other stakeholders that I couldn't meet with, and we had 500 kind of um, submissions back with great mm -hmm. insights for us. And the reason I tell you this is because we felt like it was very important to understand the collective perspective and needs of the market mm -hmm. because it's not just about Vera, it's about how we enable great things to happen throughout the market. And so we felt like we needed to have a better understanding of what that was. And so the, the feedback and the critical kind of insights that came back to us helped us put a, um, more clarity and specificity under those three kind of big umbrellas of operational excellence. So I'll just talk about them briefly. Yeah. Uh, I could go on all day. But uh, operational excellence, it's about making sure that we are servicing our stakeholders, that we are answering questions quickly, that they know who to talk to. There's a lot of questions and confusion, and it's difficult to get a hold of us. Another one is about just speeding up the process, just making sure that there is clarity and expectations. So we're gonna be setting kind of service level standards, we're gonna publish them, we're gonna hold ourselves accountable to them. So be on the lookout for that. And then the other piece is about just enabling incredible action. And so we don't think that we can actually accomplish the speed with the quality without really a big investment in technology. And so we have a multi-year kind of digitalization initiative. We have just begun that process, but it will be an enabler not just for Vera to deliver what we need to deliver, but also anyone that is connected with us, it's gonna actually help enable your organizations as well. And that is what our goal is. Around program impact and scientific integrity, it's about just utilizing the best practices, making sure that we have kind of independent research completed so that we're building trust. We wanna have the highest trust in all of the credits that we mm -hmm. uh, issue, and we feel a really strong responsibility to that. There is a large plethora of methodologies that we kind of manage and maintain, and we just want to make sure we are doing everything we can to build the trust and credibility so that the market is not stagnant, so that the market is not worried, so that the market flourishes, because if we're in the way, we're keeping great things from happening around the globe. And then the last one is about accountability, and that accountability is broader than just accountability to our uh, individual needs. It's accountability to the stakeholders, to the communities that these projects serve, uh, to the planet, to all of, to, you know, we talked about that already. And so it's like, this is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And so that is calling on us to collaborate, to build partnerships, to, um, yeah, to really reach out. And so part of this listening tour is also just establishing relationships. And the great thing that I heard in every single conversation was, Vera is a trusted partner. You've got some issues. You got to get. We got to get. There's an opportunity for you to up your game. Um, but at the end of the conversation, it almost always ended with, "We're in this together. Mm -hmm. Like we are fighting a big fight too, and count on us to help." And so we're going to take people up on that. 
I love that you said that. It really is a market of so many disparate stakeholders. And in many ways, Vera ha is the face of the market. It's the representative of the market, in part because of the sheer volume of credits and the number of methodologies that you have, the volume of yes. credits that you issue. Yep. Um, and that's for better or worse. So I think probably, <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> so I think probably the number one topic of conversation in the VCM this year has to do with certain quality and integrity challenges leveled against nature -based, certain nature-based methodologies. And Vera has taken many of the arrows on behalf of the market, I would say, um, in that conversation and in that debate. Um, on the one hand, everyone recognizes that methodologies need to be continuously improved, um, which is and has always been Vera's approach. Um, and on the other hand, uh, there is a robust market that's accomplishing tremendously beneficial things. And if we can get that balance right, I think we all agree that it's an incredibly significant market. And so how are you navigating this moment where Vera is sort of the face um, whereas sometimes it's for the good, occasionally it's you know for the for the uh, more challenging. So, navigating is a good word. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, and we are trying to balance making sure that we are listening to the critiques, that we're holding a really high bar for our own performance and challenging ourselves. Um, and I think the other is how can we establish trust by working with others? And so I think it's back to maybe having, we, we are gonna launch a research initiative where we have independent research because there is a balance when we are trying to de defend ourselves, it looks self-serving. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, how do we establish trust could be like work that has to happen outside of us. We might commission work or uh, work with others to help make sure that we are establishing uh, the baselines or the, the, uh, and the impact analysis of the projects. Uh, we have reached out recently to some of the ratings agencies. It's like, well, how can we use different parts of this um, and, and not try to do it all of ourselves? And so mm -hmm. that's how we're navigating. It's, it's, it's been a challenge. I don't know that we have all the answers, uh, but we, it's very important to us uh, to work our way through this because we know it's, it's critical for the market. Yeah, I think it's important to everyone because like yes. you said, it's critical for the market. Yeah. Um, Going back to the commitments that you outlined in the new era for Vera, um, the newsletter that yes. was sent out, yes, <laughs> um, it seems like a lot of those are operational initiatives, which is very exciting. It's both setting thematic objectives and then making sure there's the operational processes and teams to be able to fil fulfill those commitments. Can you talk a bit about your approach to um, transforming the operations and the team at Vera um, team management, team building, team development, different work streams, et cetera, and maybe how it's not so new for you given the experiences that you've had in the private sector before. Okay. So, that yeah, was a lot of questions in there, but I, I, let me just go back to the <laughs> beginning. Any it's any okay. ones you like. <laughs> yeah. So let me just break it down. So there, were a lot of, there are a lot of operational things in that. Our goal is for not, that not to be the primary ongoing, but it's kind of the ticket to the game. Unless mm -hmm. we can actually deliver and be prepared to scale all these other, these reputational things and all of that, we won't be able to sustain those. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to get the operations in order. And, and so, so that, that's why there are so many of those right now because we are not delivering the, what's expected of us in our core, in our core operations. Um, and in terms of like how do you set the teams up for success, operational excellence has like, and I won't get on my soapbox, I get really excited talking about this, but it's an entire system. And so there's a system of do you have the right capabilities, are you structured internally correctly, or, or roles and responsibilities defined, do you have data and insights about and your finger on the pulse of what's actually happening, so there's a whole data element, there's a technology element that actually can help mistake proof the work uh, we're looking at things from a lean six sigma uh, approach which is just about where are things like stopping and getting wasteful in the process so I would say it's not a one-size-fits-all in the short in the in the recent term we have we've created just like an HR department and a talent acquisition group and a learning and development individual like these are just like 
core fundamental things. We have an incredibly talented organization and I am so inspired by the team that we have, but they are mostly functional experts. They're functional experts in this fight or in, in particular methodology. And what we need to do is surround them with other capabilities uh, like the analytics, like some of the new uh, opportunities with technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence. There's just so many insights from the data that we could be pulling and, and reacting to, and, and that's just not available yet. And so to me, I think about it as enabling the organization by leveraging the strengths that we have and then supporting them with either infrastructure or other capabilities that don't exist today. And this is the way that you take Vera from an organization that is in some ways the gatekeeper organization of a $2 billion market and you set it up to scale, exactly. commensurate with the scale that we all expect to see in the yes. market. Yes. Um, yeah, that's yeah. It's phenomenal. It's a, it's it's a great aspiration and um, tremendously important. Yeah. Um, can you share a bit about what, if anything, keeps you up at night and what gets you up in the morning when it comes to this market? So th there are two things that keep me up at night. Um, one, so in, in the conversations I had, you know, I've only been in this, in this kind of role for a few months now, and so I have not lived the impact of the projects that we're enabling, you know, firsthand. Mm -hmm. But in the conversations and the listening tour, the things that haunt me are the stories of the people at the end of the process that we've either disappointed because we've delayed the financing, mm -hmm. or, a met, you know, or, or some of the project failed, and then the communities that were waiting for that money, um, you know, I can, I can get emotional about that. Um, so that, that haunts me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing that, so, and I, you know, I heard just, I just heard incredible stories about lives changed as well. So places where we disappointed and where we had a direct impact because of the lack of our ability to deliver. And then there is the, the impact of the people that lives were changed because of this and forests that are standing and pictures of endangered species that would not be here. Like, oh, the other thing that keeps me up at night is like I am like strategizing. So I wake up every night between like 2 and 4.30 and I'm just thinking, what are we tackling tomorrow? Um, and so like how do we like look at all of the dis these disparate needs, requirements, requests, hopes, desires, whatever, and like come up with a game plan that we are like focused and productive every single day. We have no time to waste. There is such a strong sense of urgency and I feel an incredible amount of responsibility. Um, and the team is looking for, for us to work together, but for me to like really step into that role and I just don't want to waste a minute. And so those are the things that keep me up at night. What gets, keeps me excited about the morning are the people that I work with. Um, the team that I have, they'll do anything. They're incredibly talented. They're coming together. We're working and collaborating. And we're excited about this future. And uh, so that's what, that's what gets me up in the morning. Can't wait to get, can't, can't wait to, get to work every day. That's such a beautiful answer for the question. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I think on the first part of your answer, it's the stories of the projects that need to get disseminated, yeah. um, that need to be the face of this market. Mm -hmm. People need to understand what this market actually supports and funds through the carbon credits, and that is the communities on the ground, the people on the ground, often in the global south, in the developing yes. world. Yes. And so I think it's phenomenal that you internalize that so quickly. And I think it behooves us as a market to get those stories out there and disseminate them because they aren't very emotional. Yes. They're very evocative. Yes. And they really are at the core of what we're all working towards. Yes. And so, yes. um, I, I'll share yeah. one, I'll just share one. I Please hope do. I can do it without crying. <clears throat> but I was, I was talking with um, Ben and Vanessa at TIST. I don't know if you've ever met them, most lovely human beings. Um, but they talked about some of the work that they had done in, I think, Uganda and Tanzania. And what they described, and I think they just went on a church trip, like, thinking they were going to do something for a week, and then it, like, changed their life, and they've been doing this for, like, 30 years or something. But what they described was that the people talked about that the elders would share with them about trees, because there were no trees 
And so it was only about a story of a tree that these people wow. knew. And he said that, which, you know, think about that. Yeah. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. They've never seen a tree. And so the, so he, anyway, he said, then the guy took him to the top of this hill and he said that I could, as far as you could see, there was not one tree. And so it's not even like you could walk to a tree. I mean, I just, isn't that hard to That's believe? I feel so naive and mm -hmm. so sheltered in my life because um, I've never heard that before. Yeah. But the great news was that he had gone back. They had just had their 25 year anniversary in Uganda in the same little school room with no windows and same, no doors or anything. And they had their 25 year celebration. And the people from the communities, you know, just came and shared the impact that, that these projects have had. Um, and I agree with you, we, we agree with you that we've got to bring those stories to life mm -hmm. and we are committed to doing that. It, it just, we haven't been able to do that in the last few months, but be on the lookout um, because it's important for the world to know. Amazing. I don't think we could end on anything better, not just our conversation, <laughs> but the day. So I want to thank Judith tremendously for sharing your insights and thoughts and for the unbelievable work that you're doing at Vera. Thank you. Um, we all are very thank you. grateful. <laughs>